Okay, welcome to this demand gen recording. This is going to be focusing on interior design and how to make the move from AutoCAD to Revit and start using building information modeling. So what I got here is Revit and AutoCAD open. And I have one of the sample data sets from AutoCAD. So when you go to your start, you can go explore sample drawings. And here we have sheet sets, architectural. Uh, we have this file here, which I've opened and just grabbed out the reference file. What I have done here is because it's an Imperial, I've just had to put it in a new fresh drawing and just scale it um, up by um, inches to the correct metric environment. So just taken it and scaled it by 25.4 to get it correct. So I can reuse it inside of Revit and inside of the metric environment. Um, for anybody working in America, um, you work in Imperial, the rest of the world works pretty much in metric. So we're going to work on that today. So um, here's my AutoCAD file um, for an interior design workflow. I'm going to say that I've been tasked with doing a fit out for this building here. It has a bathroom core, uh, central meeting room and some stairs here and then another um, yeah, set of exit stairs here. So um, that's what we're going to work with today and we're going to be doing it all live straight out of the box with vanilla AutoCAD and vanilla Revit. Um, here in Revit, this is the basic interface. We're going to um, just hit new and we're going to use the default AU metric template. There are other ones here to choose from and we're going to go and um, open that and it's going to load in all the information we need to get up and running. Now you can customize these as, as needed. We have uh, numerous partners around the world who can do this for you as well. Um, this is just the basic one out of the box. So um, what we have in the interface with this template is some floor plans, some ceiling plans, elevations and sections. And then we have uh, what's called families. And these are like all your blocks, but they're all in 3D, which allows you to get up and running. So embedded within this one, if we wanted to do furniture, you'll see we'll have some uh, average looking little desks here. We're not gonna use any of these today. We're gonna get some from um, manufacturers' websites, but um, what you can do if you do a template tutorial is you can build all these up yourself and, and configure it as needed. So this one's gonna be out of the box. So first thing I wanna do here is start working with that CAD plan by linking it in. You can import it, but I'd strongly recommend you don't do that. You link CAD files in. Um, you can also bring in PDF data here now if you're working on Revit 2020. Uh, we've got this new feature to work with PDFs and you can actually snap to PDF vector lines as well. The uh, CAD file import, this is the one that I have um, not saved just yet. So always make sure you save, save this one. So I'm gonna do a quick save as, dump it on my desktop. And I'm just going to call it demo uh, AutoCAD to, to Revit. And not AutoDad, AutoCAD. Okay, and now back in Revit, we're going to bring in demo AutoCAD to Revit. And um, we'll what you'll have at your end is AutoDetect, so I'll just leave that on. And here we have uh, that file available. So if you need to check anything, you can start to check uh, dimensions. So let's just see what this one has done. Um, so what we could do is just look at something uh, simple here. And it even looks like the dimensions I've gotten in this previous drawing are a little bit messed up, but I won't worry too much about that. Let's just see how this is coming. Okay, so obviously way too big. Um, if this does happen, you can go and edit it here as well. Um, it has by default brought it in as uh, inches. Um, so let's go and see if that fixes it. And it's at 25, scale, so it's scaled up. And let's see if this uh, improves it a little bit. So again, we'll just use the uh, hallway and the doors just to make sure this is uh, correct. Okay, so 1400 for 
this corridor looks about right and if you need to check a door ideally the doors will probably be 800 810 depending on where, you, where you're building um, 914 okay so this looks correct um, it has come from an imperial file so that's why it's probably a little bit out in terms of millimeters but it's correct for what we need for the demo today so here we have our cab plan it has come with this little push pin in it this um, prevents you from um, accidentally moving it around so you're trying to move it and it's not moving um, it is selecting and highlighting though um, what you can do if you don't even want to select it is you can um, go down here and go select pin, pin elements and now it won't even grab it now there's a little bit of uh, housekeeping I want to do here um, and a lot of this doesn't really matter but if you want to sort of have everything sort of centered in a certain location you can you can do all that so I might just want to center it here between the uh, the markers for the elevations in the section uh, I'm going to put the pin back in it you can also uh, query layers um, so here's all my dimensions I can actually query that and um, here we can manually go through and actually hide those layers in the view so if you need to tidy it up that's uh, still active this is just hiding all the, the hatching from the neighboring building um, I'm probably not going to need any of this and again this is just you know straight out of the box so um, let me just undo a couple of things here because I do need to keep on the layers for the walls and I'll just keep on that other uh, magenta layer Okay, so this is probably enough for us to be working with for our interior fit out. Um, I think what we'll do is we'll work with this fit out on this side here. And the last thing I want to do here is just turn off um, that selection criteria. Um, you can also go to your visibility settings here. So we've actually got these uh, visibility graphics, BG for short. And you can even customize how you want it to look when it's been imported in. So we actually have our imported categories. We have all those layers that have come through. If we want to just grab them all and override them, we could just make them all one color, or we could just go and choose um, half tone, and that will just make everything a lot lighter in, in the background. So you can do all that for a lot of stuff uh, as needed. Um, so that's just a little um, handy tool should you want to um, just tidy it up a little bit and you can change all the layer colors and everything as per your preference. Okay, um, probably the last thing, I'll keep the text on here just so I've got some sort of reference. Okay, so a few minutes in and uh, we have uh, gone over how to bring in that, that CAD file into your Revit environment. We want to get started straight away just to sort of build up what's existing. Um, ideally, it'd be great if everybody was working in Revit and uh, the architects or the engineers or the people you're working with would give you the CAD files. Um, in some instances, they may have point cloud data, which is great. However, um, uh, end of the day, you've got to have a Revit file really to do accurate layouts. But this is like a nice handy tool for laser scanning or photo. Uh, photogrammetry so you can bring in uh, point cloud files that you want to um, they can be very heavy so just a word of warning if you do bring them in you're going to need a lot of processing power depending on uh, how detailed each um, point is but that's a whole nother tutorial so what we're going to do here is uh, focus on this part of the building and we're going to just simply go and start creating some walls so You've got tools to actually draw walls. You've got tools to actually grab the existing lines from CAD. And I'm just going to select that. Um, at the moment, it's set to brick veneer. Uh, I'm going to leave it on just a generic 200 millimeter wall and just go through and select this face. And you can see it's it's creating a wall for me. Now, it's actually center lining it here. I want to do it on the outside face. So I'm going to go here and go finish face exterior. Let's do it again. So I finish face, uh, finish face interior. Let's see if that does it a bit better. Got the wrong one. There we go. Yeah. So that's um, you can select it and it will line with the wall. So I'll just do that again. Um, there's a number of options you can choose from. So I'm just getting wall, pick lines, and it's now sitting on the finish face exterior. 
So I'll just go into that wall, just hover like that. And now it's gone and created uh, those walls for me straight away. So I haven't had to manually really draw anything. So there's my um, exterior wall. And um, if you do want to see more information, you can actually go wireframe and that will show the windows underneath. I'm just going to leave it on hidden line for now and I will keep it coarse. Now, um, we can see that this wall is probably a little bigger. So if I just want to quickly measure that, it's probably a 2, 220, 228. So 2, 230 is probably um, the correct size. Um, what we can do here is we can either make it the 228 0.6 or we can make it 230. This one here I'll just go and go edit type and what I want to do is um, I want to duplicate this one so I'm just going to go generic uh, 230 for now and we can make this a lot more accurate as we go through the process but it's always good just to keep things basic until you've worked out what the finishes are going to be. I'm just making it 230 and go OK, go OK and now we have a, a 230 wall. Just like an AutoCAD, you can go and match properties. So um, here we have the MA tool. Um, where is it? Is it? Here it is. So uh, match match properties. So we can go and make that one. Um, so MA match from that one to that one. That one's fine. And then that one there. And now we have the wall sort of sitting at the right right place. Um, I'm just going to repeat this again as well. Just go and do a an architecture wall. And this one, I don't want the 200, I want the 100 wall. Um, I'll just manually draw it this time. So you can see here, I'm just drawing, delineating across that line. And these partition walls look to be um, probably 120. Um, now again, if you need to uh, redraw lines here, I can go here. And up here, you've got Create Similar, CS. Or you can right click and go Create Similar. And here we have um, those walls in place, and they're all cleaning up. Now we can do a lot more to tidy these up in, in a minute, but um, that's essentially what what we're doing here. Um, and I'll just do one more, create similar, and uh, just draw along this wall here to here. And now we have the uh, the basis of of our walls. And um, another handy little thing, uh, let's say I want to mirror that one. There's all these different tools you quickly do, do mirror lines. So I can find the center of that wall and then mirror it. And then we've got um, this one down the other end. Okay, so that's pretty easy. Um, you can repeat these, you can get a lot more accurate. You can add columns, you can thicken up walls, make walls thinner. You can add little nibs and bits and pieces. Um, and in 3D, when we go to the little uh, 3D default view here, we have um, the starting point of our interior fit out. So it's very easy to, to get up and running here, um, you know, to go from that 2D to 3D environment. We're going to do a few more things by adding windows, adding a bit more detail. Um, focusing mainly on, on this space here, we'll do a, a fit out and um, add some furniture, do some scheduling and some visuals within the, within the hour. So we're now um, 15 minutes in and we've got a little bit of 3D here with the AutoCAD files. So back here in the um, ground floor, I want to start adding some windows. So I'm going to go here to my wireframe view. And just go to find. And uh, we're going to see where our window locations are. So in uh, Revit, you typically go from left to right. Um, we're going to add some windows. Embedded in this platform are some default windows. I'll show you we can get more windows from different locations as, as we go. We're just going to use the default one here, which is kind of flexible. And I'm just going to go and place a window here and here and here. And I'm going to uh, duplicate, sorry, uh, extend. I just did uh, WT to toggle between the windows just so you can see what's happening in 3D. Um, here we have our windows, here we have our windows. Now at the moment, uh, these have come in um, at this default size that we've got set here, but maybe we want to make them bigger. Now I don't have all the sill height information here, probably need to go back and look at the sectional information. There doesn't to be a tag for the sills here. 
Um, so I'll just go and just see how big that window is. Okay, 12, 19. Um, so with this window here, all I'm going to do is just get it to, to that width of being um, 12, 19. And for the height, um, I'm going to be creative and um, do them at... Actually, I'll just, leave the, I'll just leave them at what they were. Sorry. Let me just cancel that and edit type. Um, I am going to do something just, just different here. I'm going to duplicate this and just say that these are 12, 19 and just leave them at uh, 1830 for the height and then just go 12, 19. Now, there are numerous other parameters here. We won't get too deep into this. This is just, just a quick, quick workflow and go OK. And now we have um, this window. I can also use the align tools. You've got a line here, so you can go align, just align it to that particular CAD file. I can even lock it in place if I want to. So if the CAD file changes, that will change as well. And again, I'm just going to go MA and grab that window and modify that one. I could do it here in the 3D view here. MA, grab that one and that one. And now we have those windows um, looking correct. So I'm just going to move these into the right location. Um, close this one out. And... This one almost looks to be in the right location. Again, if it's not, you can just use the align tool and have it aligned to that vector CAD file there. And I'm guessing this is going to be symmetrical. So I'm going to grab those those windows. That's grab three windows. You need to filter through. You can filter through categories here. And then um, draw the mirror axis. So I find the center point of this wall. Draw that mirror axis. And now that has gone into um, that wall there. Now it looks like this building is not symmetrical. So again, I can go and grab these items and then I'm just going to move this one to suit here and now they're in the right location. So uh, pretty simple stuff here. Now um, if you've got some other windows in this design, so if you need to bring in other windows, you can go to insert and load family. And again, this can be done um, either from the window here. So if I go click that window and we don't have these type of windows here, I will go and load the family. It will default typically to your Revit library. Hopefully you've got this all set up or you're working with a, an IT service provider or a, a BIM manager who can help set this up for you. If not, please check out the um, Autodesk Knowledge Network Center. So um, Autodesk AKN. This is a great resource for learning our products. So anything you want to learn about is, is all uh, available here so we can come back to that that later but there's some some really good um, content to get you enabled on our products so I'm going to go to uh, my windows and you can see I've got a lot of interesting categories here um, and I've got numerous different window types here I could load in so um, I know it's not gen weld it's gel win <laughs> Um, but what you can do, go here is you can go to some of these uh, websites and download from their uh, library files. This one is just going to be uploading all the way back from 2009. And now we have this other window which I can load into the space. So um, this is how it's going to look like in, in 3D. And these can all be uh, configured perhaps as, as needed. Um, if you do want to find more content for this, um, a great place to start is BIM Object. Um, this is probably one of the larger um, BIM suppliers. And you can go and find all the different types of windows that you might be interested in. So you can see Gerald Wynn are here. You can go and grab these, download them and uh, place them inside of your Revit model. You do have to uh, log in and register. It's free though, so you can go and um, do that with your LinkedIn or your Google login, or if you're with Autodesk, you can log in. And this will just allow me to uh, instantly grab this information and download it. So I'll just do this again, window, and you can go and filter through all of this. I mean, there's, there's a lot here, so you can go to the types. Um, all of this can be um, filtered or regions or brands so I'll just knock it down to um, one international brand which will be um, 
There's a lot here, as you can see. Let me just choose uh, Child Win, um, Northern Europe. Uh, let me just go that one there. So I'm just going to work with one brand and uh, let's choose something that could be of interest for this fit out. Um, lots to choose from here. So I will um, go with this one, for example, and hit download. This will tell me that there are materials and textures available. There's um, a text file for the type category um, catalog and the river file. So I'm just going to download this and dump this on my desktop. Now ideally you want to save it in the exact right place but I just want to show you how easy it is to um, bring this into your Revit environment without having to, to do too much. So here um, inside of Revit with my Explorer I'm just going to drag and drop that in. This one was made in 2015 so I was just doing a quick upgrade. And it's just processing down here and in a second we will have it ready in our model there we go so um, now we have um, this particular window made by an actual window manufacturer sitting in our model there's a lot of different things you can do here in terms of adding more information um, i won't get into all of this but you can also make it a bit bigger um, this will flex as well so maybe i want to have this one match the proportions of the other windows so 1830 by 1830 and this family will uh, flex accordingly so simple little things is also URLs to the manufacturer's website and where we got the family from. Um, some of the parameters that come with these applications, there can be like a hundred of them or something like that. So um, it all comes down to how much information you want in your building information model. Now I'm going to be a bit more creative here and just not follow the plan exactly. Um, I'm going to propose that we um, have this window um, centered so I'm gonna go center center just equalize that and um, copy this out say uh, to four take that on a little bit maybe the 300 between there and then finally um, mirror I'm just gonna mirror it across here and now we have uh, three interesting windows for our fit out. So um, likewise, we can do the same with doors. So we had in our ground floor plan here, when I go back to just um, hit the wireframe to see where the doors might be, um, you can go and uh, host a door here or an opening. So for this one, I'll just, just show you, here, here's a door. You can um, offset it off that wall as needed. You can uh, flip it as needed. Um, you can also do openings. So um, here in the main architectural tab, you'll see tools to allow you to um, modify different items. So here we actually have a wall opening. And you can see in the original design here, there was an opening in the wall. So I'll just go and do it from, from here to here. And now we have uh, an opening and you can start to select that and configure it as needed so um, little things like that can just help you enhance your productivity when you're starting to do these early sketch designs and this one also has um, offsets as well so maybe from the top it's um, uh, negative 400 for example for that particular opening okay so um, moving on just want to do a couple other things now so you got doors and windows and walls we want to create some floors and ceilings um, on the ground floor here I want to do a ground floor for this particular space so I'm going to go to floor and do an architectural floor and by default it highlights the walls here so you can actually go and select the walls that you want to frame your floor so let's say we're just going to focus on this internal space at the moment and we're not going to go out into the lobby 
um, we're just gonna focus on this space. So I'll just grab those walls. At the moment, they just need to be trimmed up a little bit. So I'm just gonna hit TR for trim. The trim command is here as well. So trim, 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 and that one there. And now we have um, our floor um, that we're working to. Now we wanna work to the inside face of this wall. So you can actually uh, flip that around. You can see that's done it almost across the whole line. And now we have our uh, our floor. Now it's just doing a generic 150 thick floor, but you can get into different types here. We'll um, work it up into something else shortly. So here's our floor finish, and we can see this in, in, in 3D as well. If you need to um, see what it's looking like in a realistic mode, you can do that as well. Just click on that little display. And that's starting to show you what's going on. Now we haven't added too many materials here. Um, you can see the window sills that are showing up with a, a timber finish. So, um, okay, so moving um, to our ceiling, and we'll do this one in 3D. Ceiling is the same thing. Now there is a plain ceiling you can choose from. There's also gridded ceilings if you want. So I'll just do the plain one for now. There's an automatic ceiling. Um, this may not work perfectly depending on how it's sort of set up. Um, we can do it here. I'm just going to WT just so you can see both. You, so I'll just do this again. Ceiling, automatic ceiling. You hover over that space and there's a little red line there. That shows that the um, ceiling has been created. Just ignore that warning. It's just not going to show on floor plan. But when we go to our ceiling plan here, um, this should show up. So there's our actual ceiling in our ground floor ceiling plan. Well, you'll notice, if I just close that a couple here, um, this is your ground floor plan. That symbol there is just like a little white box with some dashes. Your ceiling plan starts to integrate that there's some grid. So if you see ground floor and ground floor, one's a ceiling and one's um, a floor plan. Now, if you want to see the gridded ceiling, maybe you've got to work with a gridded ceiling, you can flick to that one there and it has your 600 millimeter grid panels um, you can tab to grab the whole thing and maybe we want to work with a, a 1200 something like that um, now a lot of this can be um, edited and reconfigured at the moment it's at uh, a 2.6 meter stud I'm gonna move it up to 27 and um, in the background here you can start to um, adjust different um, aspects of this the ceiling type so we'll, we'll come back to some of these again just for the sake of time, we want to get some results by the end of the day. So um, we've now done our floor and our ceiling and our windows and our doors. Now, what does it look like to be standing inside of this space? So maybe you want to do a quick um, view from when you walk in off this lobby space. What does it look like to be standing here? So I'll just um, say we're going to be focusing on those windows. Here's how it's going to look like. And I can bring this out a little bit here to better understand the space. So if you wanted to sketch over this, print it, render it, you could do this um, straight away. There's numerous things you can do here to make it look a little bit more aesthetically pleasing in the graphic display options. I can go to um, maybe choosing just a wireframe, hidden line, smooth lines with anti-aliasing. I could start to turn on some shadows and some ambient shadows, hit apply. And now we're starting to see something a little bit different here. It all comes down to what your preference is. We've even got sketchy lines. So you can sort of turn it into a hand sketch straight away if you want to do that. Um, and then there's other things you can do with, with the lighting. So you can crank up the ambient light, um, reduce the shadows, and you could um, adjust the background to be a sky or a gradient. Um, let's do this one as a sky or an image. I'll leave it as a sky at the moment. And um, yeah, so we're inside our, our space. And what's kind of cool here is you can grab all these items and adjust them as needed. So this one has got a sill height of 600. I'm going to make it 300. And likewise, I could grab these windows here. At the moment, they're at a seal height of 305. I'm going to grab all instances in the entire project and make all those windows have a seal height 
of of zero and they will all drop down so some interesting ways you can uh, be designing in 3d and in 2d it's all updating um, as as we go so here's here's our view uh, I can also go and grab the um, uh, camera and, and adjust it as needed um, pretty pretty easy to get up and, and running with with these sort of views here okay so um, what I want to do now is start to fit out the space and we're now at the uh, 30 minute mark so we're halfway through and the goal here is to um, fit this out so what we've done is we've created um, the shell of the building I propose that we do some different windows and and here we have it ready to go so here in the ground floor plan I want some furniture uh, I want some lighting I want some floor finishes and I want to see what it's looking like in 3d as I'm designing it I want about to schedule it and I want to visualize it so here on the BIM object website, I'm going to go back here and search for furniture. And there are a huge amount of categories here you can choose from. So um, a great site here is um, uh, Hayworth, Hallworth. Um, I will go and hit that one to get started. Um, what I could do is I could actually just go to the manufacturing section here and I can see all the products that these guys um, make. So I'm going to get um, some stuff that's already configured here. Um, maybe I'll just go um, back one and I'll try not to be too picky, try not to be too architectural. There's a lot of stuff you can get here. Now, this is going to be the tricky bit because all of this is broken down into um, different individual parts. So let's go and choose um, furniture. Let's type in office. And see what comes up here. And maybe there'll be a bit more we can choose from. Okay, so I want to get like um, a collection of, of office stuff that's already configured together. So what I like to do is I like to open a new tab and grab um, this one. And um, I'm going to see if it's all come together as one. I think that should be it there. So let me just grab that. And I will download it, save it to my desktop. And the other one um, that I thought looked interesting here was these meeting tables. And yeah, you can see there is a lot, uh, maybe even this sort of meeting booth here. Okay, there's also little previews. Um, there's little 3D configurations here and you can see that numerous providers provide a lot of different file formats. So this one looks like it's got a lot of file formats, but everything is all in, in one location. We'll save that and the uh, last one I wanted was this little private office here. And let's see, now I think this one here is going to be the, the main one to download, whereas these are all the individual parts. Now, if I just get the big one, this should um, be the one thing that we, we need to bring it in. And you can see it's an RVT file. So it's actually taken all the smaller files and combined it into one. So there would be two, two things to show you what you can do here with uh, bringing this across. So first of all, I'm just going to go back to my desktop and I'm going to just use the um, drag and drop system to bring this one across. Um, so there's the table, it's an RFA, I'll bring that one in. This one was built, you can see in Revit 2017. And I'll put the, the meeting table at the center of the room. It's going to ask me to save the project. Demo Revit. Um, a lot of things like your autosave and that can all be configured in the options, where you want to save them, how many backup copies you want. 
and this should be popping up in a second. Okay, it is a big table, fantastic. Okay, um, what we also have here is um, some lighting points. I'm just going to escape. Um, it's even got some uh, voltage points here as well, so it looks like you can actually uh, plug stuff into it. Um, the other one I want to do here um, is grab, uh, that was the window. We want to actually open up that um, other Revit file. So here you can see these are the two that I've um, downloaded that I actually want to open and uh, copy in. So I'm just going to go to Revit and open these ones because these are all built together. little preview here as well to see what they look like. So here we have um, what looks to be like a boardroom table. This one was built in Revit 2011. So that open up. Uh, while that's happening, um, we're going to do some other stuff. I want to get some uh, lights, light fittings. And again, um, you may want to choose the brands that are supplied in your country. So um, here we can see there's a lot of uh, lights to filter through all these different type of light fittings. I want to choose ones that are available in, in my region. So I'll be going over here looking for a brand that looks familiar. Um, a brand that I really like is Ecosini. Um, they are pricey, but they do some beautiful light things. So we'll just filter through here and um, we will just, just grab this. Now, um, if it's not bringing up all the, the lights, you can, of course, um, just search for that brand in particular. So if I just go back here, and I want to search for all of it, it goes any. You can see it's going to come up here, Italian spell spelling. Um, you can see there's going to be a lot more to choose from. So there's outdoor lights, there's track lighting, there's surface mounted, um, whatever you need. Um, these guys have a huge amount of, uh, of content and uh, they're very uh, stylish light fittings. So um, I will choose something that could look interesting um, I'll choose um, some track lighting just so it's a bit more uh, relevant let me just do one of these so I'm gonna grab that one and just download this one and again it is a Revit 2016 file it's got some information about the dimensions and there's other things you can download as well in terms of the spec um, there may be IES data embedded within the light fitting um, there's, there's a lot of really good content um, available here should you want to look over everything before you download it. Okay, so um, this was the other one that I downloaded. This one is actually a, an IVT file with the families embedded within it. So you can go and grab each one of these individually should you want to. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to grab maybe the chairs and table and I'm going to go here to copy and then go back to my other file and um, to, to paste things in, um, the quick way I do it is just go here, select something, and just go paste. Paste from clipboard. It's just telling us a couple of things about different hatches and stuff. And I'll just paste it in here. And there we have it. So that's now uh, pasted that into the model. I'll close that one out. Just give it a second. Don't need to save it. Um, I want to open up the other one which was this one, which I thought was kind of interesting, a little private meeting room. We're copying that across. This one's doing an upgrade from 2011 to 2020. So just, just to recap, I'm just grabbing RFA files, which are the family files, and RVT files from BIM object. And I can either cut and paste them in or I can drag and drop them in depending on um, how they're being, being set up. So uh, if you need to look um, through everything um, here, you could type in the category. Um, so interior concepts uh, or interiors. This will bring up a huge amount of content that's available for interior design. So um, definitely, you know, check out 
this um it can be a great place and there's numerous other <coughs> manufacturers directly on their website making content as well which you can you can download so um this is just one that i typically go to because it has the most content available okay uh that one is still upgrading um, other sites, um, so if I want to go to uh, this one here, just to show you, this is uh, Coroma. Coroma uh, make, you know, bathroom whitewares and some kitchen goods. Um, what you've got here um, in the resources um, should be the ability to specify um, items. So let me just do this again. Coroma bim there you go the bim library um, this is one direct from the manufacturer so if you're working with a manufacturer ask them if they've got a bim library Coroma has one here we're going to work with revit we can go and choose the category we're interested in so it could be uh, laundry tubs kitchen sinks showers and toilets i'll just grab a toilet um i'll just grab a wall face toilet and here we have them available so um, without being too to particular I'll just grab this one again it's as simple as just choosing the file format you want and it will download it here we have it and I'll put it on my desktop and we have this one available so back to Revit finally this one's opened and you can see these are all the individual components which I can choose to bring in this one I'm going to grab the whole lot and again I'm just copying to clipboard back to ground floor and um, I'm just going to go paste it in, so control V, and we'll put this um, in the model. So there's a lot of lot of data in this one. Um, you can get really um, accurate. You can build a huge amount of information into Revit content. Um, it just depends on how much information you need. Do you need every um, fixing, flashing? Um, you can do that if you want to, but it can make the model very heavy. So this one has now come in finish and uh, i'm not really a particular fan of these type of tables so i'm going to get rid of that one <laughs> and i'm going to um, make this the center of the office uh, what i can do if i want to is i can go and grab these these items and i can go here and uh, group them and i'll call this one the boss um, so maybe the boss wants to have a, uh, a goldfish bowl in the middle of the space so everybody can see when uh, he or she is there. And I'll just align it roughly here. And I'm just using my arrow keys to move it up a little bit. Okay. So now, um, when we go back to that 3D view, we should see something a little bit different. So let me go back to... close out that one not gonna bother about saving that one so now when we've got that 3d view which is just it's been created here inside of our project browser we go to 3d view one we should see something a bit different so kind of kind of interesting uh, what I'm going to do is just uh, just get rid of that and then uh, start again with that one and I just want to pick a different location so I can get the whole scope of the office so I want to be in the far corner here Sort of capturing everything so just by those those rises here and here we go so i've got um the goldfish office and um the hexagon windows and the stand-up table by the hexagon windows and uh you can see here this is probably a little bit taller i could crank the ceiling up and again i'm just doing it all in 3d let's let's be generous and say we've got um a three meter high ceiling space maybe three two and that will go up uh, the same now with the walls you can see the walls um, haven't gone up so what I can do with those walls I can hit one hover over one wall hit tab and that grabs them all and uh, that one is going up to the ceiling but I could go unconnected and uh, unconnected default height is four meters and that will just bring them up Okay, so um, what does this look like now? Uh, maybe as a render. Here's the uh, here's the space, and I'm just adjusting stuff as needed. And I wanna um, 
show some of what it looks like as, as graphically. So I'm just going to go find, uh, go to realistic, and I can do things like um, manipulate the graphic display options. So just like before, uh, depending on how you want to to do it, you can customize all these things. Um, lighting, I'm just going to put on the ambient light here and drop the shadows back a little bit. And um, that's roughly how it how it might look. So I haven't had to do do too much. Looks okay as a as a basic sort of sketch graphic. You can see even the CAD files are here in this view. If I don't want to see those CAD files, I can go to visibility graphics, just like in the earlier part. And actually, I can just turn turn those off, and that's gone. Now um, these walls haven't gone all the way up, so I'm just going to grab those interior walls and just put them on um, unconnected and put them on um, 4004 unconnected. And uh, we want to see what does this look like when it, when it's rendered. So in Revit, you do have uh, on the view tab here, a render engine, little teapot, and this is what you're going to get just default out of the box. So I'm just going to hit render. I haven't done anything with the materials yet, nothing with uh, the lighting, or anything too creative um, it's just a pure quick render now depending on how much detail is in your model and the speed of your machine um, will depend on how fast it's going to render in the product we can actually render on the cloud which i'll show you in a minute um, the other thing i can do here is i can actually um, overclock my machine um, i'm running it on msi and i can go to my system tuner and uh, put it on turbo and that will speed it up, go apply, and that will give me a, a faster graphics card experience with faster GPU to CPU. Okay, so what you're going to see here, basic render draft, um, probably nothing that impressive, but I could go here and make some adjustments to the exposure. At the moment, this says an exposure value for, say, um, an exterior. I might want to, you know, make that, say, 11, 0.65, um, maybe drop the saturation down to 0.95 and go apply. And now that's looking a little bit better. So it's like a, a camera exposure setting. And that's um, my, my rough model here. Now, as you go through and make more adjustments, you can you know recrank this up and re-render it. Um, other things you can do is render in the cloud. Um, so rendering in the cloud consumes cloud credits. You get 100 cloud credits every year as part of your subscription with Autodesk. However, you can buy more. Um, if you just want to do tests, you can actually render it for free just using the standard quality. Um, it won't give you a photorealistic image, but you can at least use it as a starter. So I'm just going to hit the default one. Tell me to um, email me when, when done. Um, this is just telling me that some textures are missing. We're just going to go OK. That's fine. And just let that continue in the background. Now, the cool thing here is it's uploading to the cloud. I can still keep on working on Revit. It's not going to slow me down. Now, while that's doing the rendering, um, we're now at the 48-minute uh, mark. So we're going to look at uh, scheduling and then finally an add-in for Revit to help you do walkthroughs. So on the ground floor here, um, what we can do is we can schedule out anything in the model. So let's say um, we want to... Um, add some more furniture components. So here we have had um, some items that have come in based on um, what we loaded in from BIM object. So we've got a chair here. I'm just going to drop that in. And I'm going to um, place some chairs in my model. And um, I'm just going to copy these around. Copy them, array them, whatever you need to do. Um, constrain multiple and we've got a series of chairs here we can add desks and um, cables and and uh, monitors and computers and all the rest um, here back in our 3d view you can see we've got some of our chairs we can even you know hit the space bar to rotate them as needed what I want to do is schedule out how many chairs are in the design so with each one of these chairs here there's uh, data embedded within them edit type um, this one will tell us whether we want to have arms, default elevations. It's got the materials from um, Hayworth, Allworth, um, and then links to, to their website. You could even get down into um, adding things like cost, for example. 
So maybe the chairs are 600 bucks each. You can have that as a parameter. You can also have keynotes, assembly codes. Uh, the sky is the limit, really, with how much information you want to have here. What I want to do, maybe I'm doing a massive fill out for a big law firm of multiple offices. How many chairs do we have? How much do they cost? I want to schedule them. So I'm going to go to my view tab, schedules, schedule quantities. It's going to ask um, what type of stuff we want to be scheduling. So there's a huge amount of categories you want to get. I'm just going to grab furniture and go OK. And then um, this is all the stuff you can report on. So really, you can get a lot of things out here. Um, so I will just go and add cost, count, maybe description, uh, the finishes, the family, family and type, um, the level it's associated to, the manufacturer, the mark, and just load them into my schedule here and go OK. And this has now gone through the model and extracted out the number of chairs. Now, not everyone is... Um, tagged here so look, this one's picking up um, a chair which I need to highlight the model so that one is actually embedded in here um, we won't worry about these ones right now um, I just want to bring up the the views so WT WT from the model view just to show you how things update so I won't worry about this one here at the moment this is just because it's all grouped I'm gonna grab this set of chairs here and then um, mirror them and you can see they're updating automatically in the schedule so um, each one is giving me real-time feedback on what's happening in the model um, you could even drive things from the parameters here maybe you've got a better deal and you can get it for 400 um, this will now change all elements and you can see it's already updated that um, other things you can do in the fields is you can go to uh, filters you can sort stuff, you can have grand uh, totals, so you can go and uh, add that and it will count up all the chairs for you. Um, th there really is a lot you can get into here, um, just don't have time to get into it all today, but um, you can start to um, add different types of, of filters in here as well. So. Um, if you do want to know more about this, there's numerous tutorials. There's also numerous add-ins. We have the Autodesk App Store. And on the Autodesk App Store, there are some really powerful tools for doing more advanced scheduling. So straight out of the box, um, you can do some, some, some good stuff. You can develop it. Um, but with the App Store here, you can see there's a lot to choose from. You can go to Revit and you can go down to, say, scheduling and productivity. Um, you can get all these different tools to help you with your scheduling. There's 21 pages worth. Um, or if I go to 96 per page, there's six pages, so probably about 500 different apps you can choose from. Um, some of them are free, some of them you pay for, some of them you can do as a trial, but this can really help your productivity as opposed to having to create from scratch inside of Revit. So um, with that coming up to the hour, the last thing I wanted to touch on here was um, add-ins. We do have um, tools here that will help with productivity for creating doors. Uh, one I wanted to touch on was Enscape. Uh, before I do that, I just wanted to add some light fittings to this design. I know we did download some earlier. So I'm going to go to our ground floor ceiling plan. And let me just see where's that picking up at. Sorry, it's on the ground floor. So here's our ceiling plan. And I want to um, bring in those lights. So I think um, my Eguzini light fitting here. Bring that in. And this one is, oh, these are wall faced. Oh, so that's, that's the toilet. Okay, so there's the toilet. Um, I'll just put the toilet in here for now. <laughs> so um, don't worry about the toilet. I wanna do um, one more install here. And that was the light fitting. Here we go. Um, so this one, you can place them on uh, wall faces or work planes. This one is on the ceiling work plane 
and I'll just go and add um, a few here and let's see um, how these are looking in my 3D view. Now sometimes this might not come through perfectly, you may have to do a little bit of tweaking, um, but here they are in the model, looks like they're just, just run the wrong way, so you can um, uh, flick them around and then they should be visible in that ceiling plan. So yeah, there's there's the light fittings. I won't dive too deep into that, but um, yeah, here we are in our, our ceiling plan. Um, this one here, I might want to um, center it. So we can go and use the dimensioning tools, and I can just go here and here and center that one. And then I could do a dimension between that one, that one, and that one. And I could equal out those as well. So little little tools like this to um, get things sort of correct or get those lights in the right place. And that toilet, I'm going to leave it in there. Let's see what it looks like in 3D. So here we have uh, 3D view 1. There's our toilet um, hanging off the wall. I'll just delete that for now. And here's our light fittings. Let's get rid of that one. Um, now they're not sitting exactly on the right um, work plane because I've made a few adjustments here. If I do need to make some adjustments to that work plane, I will go to my uh, section view. I'm going to move this one up. Go to view. And you can see my, my ceiling view here is actually set to 2740. And this one actually uh, set it to 32. So just to get that consistent, we'll put that on 32. And those light fittings move with it. So now back within our 3D view, we have these light fittings um, in the correct location over this task desk. Okay, so um, next thing I want to do is I want to um, put some people and do a walk around of this design. And what's really cool here is we have um, these add-ins for Revit called Enscape. And Enscape um, is a separate purchase, but it is incredibly fast and powerful. So I'm going to hit um, the asset library first, and I'm going to get some of the um, context that they have for Revit to load in here and sort of bring this 3D space to life. So they have added a lot of information. Um, there's a lot of content to choose from. And sometimes it can be tough to keep up with it all. So I'm going to just uh, filter and have some people and some office uh, furniture. So let me just, just drop back a little bit. And they're really doing a, a great job of adding a lot of uh, content to work in Revit. So we go to office. There's 57 office items to choose from. Right down to calculators and adhesive tape. Um, now I haven't done all the desks and everything in this model, but maybe I want to um, add some furniture systems or some computer monitors. Let's just see what we've got loaded up here. And this is uh, very uh, near photorealistic. You can get some really good results uh, without having to be a visualization expert. Um, the faster your PC, the faster this is going to work. So what we have is it all loading. So almost 60 different items to choose from. So we'll start off with a disk that I was waiting for. And that disk is now loaded up, almost like a family. And I will just go and plop it in the model, hit escape, um, and I will add some office workers. So I'll add uh, this character and hit escape, load in a another character. And probably the last thing to add would be um, a computer. And I'll add a design computer. And now we have some items that we can use for our office fit out. So let's get out of that. And I'm just hitting spacebar. 
and I will just um, put that person here and it's probably the same person here as well um, hit undo that hit that there and uh, again I can just copy these I don't have to go back into the Enscape library um, I'm just grabbing these and I'm going to um, mirror these as I would working with with Revit families and now I have my desk configuration here and probably don't need as many many chairs and this one here I can just hit space to get it looking right okay so that's that's my fit out now last thing I just need to double check on is the height of that computer so go to view and you can see it hasn't hosted at the desk height, but I can go and hit the move tool to bring it up. And then we have a some people and, and space. Now, what does this look like in 3D? What does this look like in the office? Well, um, before I do this, I'm just going to grab some of these items. And again, they work like families. You can uh, group them. Desk and copy them multiple or multiply around the office so there there and there and now when we go to that 3d view you can see they're they're here in the space so um really simple stuff and i want to walk through the space now you can do walkthroughs you can um fire up your vr headset you can export stuff out to share with other people i'm just going to hit start and this is going to load up the Enscape environment and it is incredibly easy to get up and running with um, as I said you don't need to be a visualization expert you can do animation you can render out stills you can host walkthroughs like real-time walkthroughs of your design on the cloud which we'll do in a second and you'll have um, something that you can really showcase very quickly to help you win work or sell your design ideas to your clients the uh, faster your pc the faster this will load up but um, it is doing a lot of incredible stuff in, in real time here um, they do have tips as well um, should you want to have personalized backgrounds um, but here we have our model so um, this allows us to very quickly uh, walk through the space and see how that feels with those windows this uh, stand-up desk i'm just going to hit uh, space bar to put it on walk mode so i'm actually walking through and here we have the people at these desks that we just created and some of the characters um, if you can't get past them just hit space bar to fit fly mode but here you have them so um very quick way to do real-time uh, visualization without having to be an expert you'll see things will update as well in uh, real time so if I go back here grab that chair and delete it it updates it here in real time again if I'm doing it in my my floor plan view here and maybe I don't want any too many chairs in here just move all these around Delete that one, delete that one. And then back here, it's updated. So this is a great tool. Um, arrow keys and gaming keys to move around it. Um, you can speed it up, you can slow it down. You've also got the option here to control the sunlight. So here it is at different times of the day, the sun coming in. Now what you notice here is as we get to um, the latter part of the day, just walk around, you can see how beautiful the light is coming in from these uh, these windows. Now we have these light fittings here. As we go through and we go into nighttime, the light fittings will start to kick in. And here we have these light fittings illuminating the space as we work into the wee hours in the morning. So it even works with the intelligent data within the uh, the light fittings here. Um, now, uh, if you want to do uh, other things here, you've got 
um, the option to render out the image. You can change materials in real time. You can also go to the settings here and customize um, different items. So if I want to bring this up full screen and let's say we want to turn off two points perspective or leave it on. Um, I've got outlines on my model, so you can make it look a lot more sketchy um, or you can drop it right down if you're wanting to aim for more photo photorealism. So that's kind of cool. Um, you could just do a white model if you want to do that. Sometimes you don't want to show clients materials. You might want to look at the lighting analysis here. You know, how much light is coming into the space here or in real time. Um, I'll just keep back on that. And I like to have those little edges. Um, there's field of view just to adjust how much you want to see, how much you don't want to see. Um, the rendering quality. Um, this is just uh, for the image adjustments. And um, another one that could be of interest is the uh, background. You can have a white background should you want to, or um, you can add in different types of environments here. So these are ones that are built in to the platform, forest environment, or if we're doing something urban. Let's see if there is a town. So yeah, all of this can be, be loaded in and you can manipulate that as, as required. Um, and you can even load in your own um, background should you need to. I won't do that for now for the sake of time. So that's um, a really quick way to um, visualize your model. We've done this all in one hour, uh, right through to be able to, to walk through our design. So um, hopefully, um, you know, this learning process has been simple enough to encourage you to, you know, take the leap and move from AutoCAD into a Revit environment. Uh, finally here, if I need to share this with somebody, I can actually um, share it as a web standalone. And that's now loading it to the cloud for anybody to, to walk around. Just gonna pause live updates. So um, with that, um, we're now at uh, the hour. Uh, we've gone through <coughs> uh, bringing in data from AutoCAD, loading into Revit, creating uh, walls and doors, windows, floors, ceilings, loading in furniture from BIM object, doing some basic scheduling, and then finally finishing up with presenting in Enscape here. Um, and this is how it looks like on the cloud. Oh, the other one, um, just to note, the Autodesk cloud here, we can go to render in the cloud. This is the one that we sent up earlier. So with your subscription, with your cloud credits, you can consume these to do cloud renders. Um, the other option is to purchase Enscape. Um, this one doesn't consume any credits, but um, there is a purchase price. This is how it looks like when you put it on the cloud. So this actual link here, you can send it to anybody and they can walk around their design. And again, you can start to um, look at the time of the day as well. So I could go here and I can um, change the, the lighting. Now the quality is not gonna be as good as say what you have on, on the product, but it's a, it's a really good way to share your design with, with people. So um, that is the Enscape Cloud plugin. The Autodesk one, here's the one that we ran up before. And here's the, uh, the render. So this is a basic one didn't cost any cloud credits to, to run, but I can re-render as a panorama, a stereo panorama. This is like to have it uh, view within one of those cardboard viewers with your phone. I can do a solar study, lighting analysis, or even like a little turntable. I'm just gonna re-render it as a, a higher um, image. So I will um, maybe crank it up to uh, 1500. Uh, I'm gonna keep that. And then 1500 by 900. And I could even have an environment here. Um, I will leave that as is. Now put on the final, and uh, what this will do is will tell me how many credits I'm gonna consume. So you get 100 credits, this will only consume one, and this will give me an okay 
graphical output. There's also different options you can, you can choose for preset prints and all that sort of stuff. I'll just hit render. And this again will just run on the cloud. I don't have to have a high spec machine. It will um, render it for me and give me a result um, reasonably quickly. So I'm just gonna let that process. And uh, if you wanna see what you can get with this, here's some that I've done uh, in the past. And uh, I'll just bring up um, this one here. So there's a group of uh, renders here. This one I've added some people, but you can uh, render these panoramas and you can be standing in the space and here's how they, they look. So that's just processing now, just give it a second. And that's what you can get. Okay, so um, that was everything. We've just gone over, over the hour, so one hour and 10 minutes. Um, hopefully uh, that has been helpful being live with AutoCAD data. Here's the result that we have within Revit. Um, this is something that hopefully you can watch and rewatch just to get you up to speed pretty quickly, um, get you familiar with, with Revit for doing interior design fit outs, moving from your AutoCAD environment into Revit and uh, being able to make your journey or your first step into the BIM world. Thanks very much for uh, joining this demand gen uh, recording.